In northern Minnesota, the snows melt very slowly. In northern Minnesota, where Earl Johannes was born, spring is short and full of surprises. Sometimes when the snows start melting, a man would look out of his window to see his fields covered with stones that were not there before. And if he cried, no one would blame him. Because the stones of winter are worse than any other plague. The stones of winter just lie there, lifeless. And that which is lifeless can break a man's back. Cheaper than you think to live like a king. Imported French champagne. Drink of king. And they install the machine free. <laughs> champagne. French champagne in this neighborhood? <laughs> but they're buying her. They're buying, I'm telling you. Matter of, don't you feel well? Huh? Feel fine, fine. Uh, yes, I'm also thinking of some changes, Harry. Hey, you're going to be busy here. <clears throat> I'll, I'll see be, you later. I'll be right with you. Huh? See you later. I'll be back. Yes, but soon. Huh? Remember Earl soon? the street was further away, and I'm not sure of his eyesight. But he says three. Yeah, he says three people came out of the store, and Johannes is one. Is that the only discrepancy? No, Johannes says the getaway car was a convertible. The old man said it was a hard time sit down. Can you die when I need you? Come on, fellas, you know what to do. Johannes, I'm Lieutenant Parker. As a liquor dealer, you know there have been three liquor stores robbed in this neighborhood in the past two weeks. Every scrap of information you can give us pertaining to these robberies will be a big help to us. Now, are you positive only one man came running out? Well, yeah, I was, I, I was across the street there and I heard the shots. <clears throat> And I turned and, and uh, one man came out. One man. The car. The car. Was it a hard top or a convertible? It was a... Uh, it was a convertible. Pardon me. 
my Mrs. Abrams, a man's wife. She's outside pretty upset. I think I ought to take her home. Does she have a family doctor? Yeah, we gave him a call. He's going to be at her apartment. Okay, we'll talk to her later. Right. Mr. Johannes, a little sedation wouldn't hurt you either. We'll be in touch with you. I saw a man die. What? I just saw a man die. It's a hold up. My friend Harry Abrams. Oh. Yeah. Gee, I'm, so I'm sorry, Dan. I'm sorry, Dad. What time is it? It's after one. How's your brother? Oh, Jackie, Jackie's fine. He fooled me, the little rat. Oh. Well, I, I kept after him all evening to do his homework until I got sore, you know. Then he started to laugh. He'd already done it in his study period in school. You know, it made me think. All the way home, I've been thinking about you and about Jack. And about me. Please, don't, don't start that again, huh, Dan? It was the way he died. And the feeling I got when that man walked in, the way he wore his, his hat and his coat. And still I walked out. And I walked all the way home. And I was thinking, look, Chris, you get all A's with one hand tied behind your back. You've got three scholarships offered you. You can take your choice of three different vocations. And you don't care which one you do. I bet he didn't even fight back. Who? Your friend. How do you know he didn't fight back? The other two liquor store dealers didn't either. That's what the papers said. The man's got a gun pointed. How's he going to fight back? Yeah, that's the whole thing in a nutshell. That's what you and I are always arguing about. I don't understand. Dad, everybody in this whole world's got a gun pointed at them. That's not the point. You know what a girl in my class wrote? Robin Hood and Clarence Darrow. They went out with the bow and arrow. Meet the cat who's my new hero. He plays it cool till the count is zero. And that's pretty sharp stuff, huh? Well, then you admire my friend, Harry Abrams. He played it cool till the, the, the count was zero. He wasn't cool. He was... Wow, he was empty. Yeah, empty. Cool means don't let them hook you. On anything, slogans, heroes, a store. Cool means... Give them what they want, but as little of yourself as possible. Stay loose. Your friend wasn't cool. He was, he was empty. You know, I'll, I'll bet I know what was going through his mind while that gun was pointed at him. He probably said to himself, here I spent a whole lifetime to build 150 square feet of store, 14 shelves, 300 whiskey bottles, 
and $120 in the cash register. So what? You want to know why your friend didn't fight back tonight? I'll tell you, because at the last second, at the very last second, he dug the truth. He had nothing to fight for, nothing. Well, Chris, your, your mother and me, we believed in things. Things we were, we'd die for. Were we hooked? Nothing. Well, then what's the difference between you and Harry Abrams? He lived hooked and empty. I'm not going to get hooked on anything. exactly his age. Jewish cemetery on the way out here, and I watched this man pick up a stone about like this. He put it up here on top. He said it was an old custom. Like uh, each time you visit, you leave a little remembrance. Well, I asked him, uh, there's this Jewish woman who's married to a Christian man. Would it be all right if they followed the custom? And he said he didn't know. I miss you. It's been a long year. been myself. I pick on the boys too much, especially Chris. And, and I don't send my suits out to be cleaned often enough. And I just, I don't know. I haven't been myself. Frida. We must have lived in a different time. I mean, we used to, to, to feel alive, to believe in things. Tomorrow wasn't just another yesterday to us. But today, everything seems so, so hollow. Well, I don't know, maybe the boys know something about this world I don't. The other day, Chris used the word empty. Freedom. Last night, Harry Abrahams got shot. He died in my arms. I did a very funny thing. I lied to the police. I don't know why. I... Something was going on inside of me. I don't know what, but... It was almost as if I, I didn't want the police to catch them. You know, there were three of them. I said there was one. It was a hard top. I said it was a convertible. I saw their faces. I said I didn't. I... Something's happening to me. Oh, 
I'll send my suits out to be cleaned this week. can hear himself think. Virgo Liquor Store has the floor. First of all, I want to apologize to the lieutenant for the way we've carried on here. Oh. Uh, shut up! Shut up! Shut up! I'm speaking for eight stores. But the lieutenant understands, I'm sure, that words and promises won't make us feel safe. Three liquor dealers, friends, dead in two weeks. Who's next, I ask? Yeah. All right. Get to your question. My question, Lieutenant, is why can't the police department put a man in the back room of each liquor store in this neighborhood until these holdups stop? Yeah. Because you are all grown, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to address you as grown ladies and gentlemen. We in the police department have the same problem that you have. We want the same thing, an end to all of these holdups. We operate the same as you do. We do the best we can with what we have. I have already gotten 10 extra foot patrolmen and six squad cars from downtown and I am applying all the pressure that I know how to get more. But what about a cop in every store? I'll answer that. This neighborhood is a very populated neighborhood. In fact, it's the most populated neighborhood in our precinct. And as you all know, or should, there are 60 liquor stores in this neighborhood. Now, the police department just can't do what you're asking. It would mean over 60 police officers on double duty or 120 men around the clock. This just can't be done. Everybody sit down. I'm quiet. Let's have a little order. Quiet there. Man in the back row. Uh, my name is Earl Johannes. Johannes Lickers. Speak up. Speak up. Uh, Johannes Lickers. Most of you don't know me. Uh, last night, uh, Harry Abrahams died in my arms. And I, I uh, read somewhere in a magazine that there's a suburb of Los Angeles out near Hollywood where if anybody walks on the streets at night, they can be stopped by a policeman. <laughs> Every, everybody is so rich there, nobody walks. In, in this neighborhood, walking scares people. Now walking, just been walking, one of the things that's, that sets man apart from the animals is that he, he can walk on his own two feet. Just, just a minute, I, re, I, remember, I remember once at a, at a liquor wholesale, one of the cut rate places, all kinds of bargains. He had this sign that says, uh, buy me now and sell me later. Buy me now and sell me later. You, you ought to know what Harry Abrams' last words to me were. He was dying, he said, he says, I'm dying on the day that I introduced French champagne. Oh. Now, are, are these the words of a dying man? Mr. A, a man Mr. from a tree. Just, just, just a minute, just a minute. I've got the glory. i got a message for all of you. There's a whole generation dying out there in the outside world, a, a generation of empties. Children are being murdered. I want order. Let that man speak there. Come on, mister, we don't want you around here. Come on, let's go. Come on, I said. Come on, hold it. Order. 
Army or police protection? Honor! Nobody's gonna buy me now and sell me later. When I die, it won't be for French champagne. When I die, let him say a man died. Not a stork. <laughs> All right, quiet down, please. All right, ladies and gentlemen, quiet down, please. Let's conduct an orderly meeting here. Will you please find your seat? Sit down. Sit down, please. Maybe if his store was doing better business, he wouldn't be so upset. <laughs> but it'll pay off. Oh, hello, Mr. Kaufman. What do you think? Well, uh, maybe it's wrong of me to ask, but, but Mr. Johannes, with the business you have been doing, I, I, I mean not doing. Nothing in this world stands still, Mr. Kaufman. I know. You either make money or you go bankrupt. Either you fall apart like a cheap toy or you... Will you uh, try it, Mr. Johannes? Oh, good. Let her go. Oh, hey, hey. Huh? Try it again. How do you like that? Well, ice cubes are wonderful for people who drink from glasses. In this neighborhood, they drink from the bottle. Maybe I should put in a supply of nipples. Sign right here, Mr. Johannes. There you are. I'll be back in a little while. Mr. Johannes. Mr. Johannes, are you sure you know what you are doing? I've never been so confident of anything in my whole life. Hi, Mr. Kaufman. My father around? Huh. <laughs> you just missed him. Going to be pretty snazzy here, huh? Yeah. When did he start all this? Well, you didn't know about it either? Well, I, I think I cracked a few lines of communication between us the other night. Say, did, uh, did he leave five dollars for me for the yearbook? He said he would. Well, I, I think he put some money here in the drawer. Oh. But uh, if not, I'll give you. Nothing to do with it, Lieutenant. What kind of panic mongering is that? Putting up signs, closed until we get sufficient police protection. What kind of irresponsibility is that for grown men? Only three stores have done it so far. What do you think we're doing here? Roasting peanuts? Yeah. What'd he say? There's nothing I can do about the signs? Isn't that like yelling fire in a crowded theater? Well, we'll see about that. What is it? It's a police permit, sir. It needs your okay.
Okay, I'll send Adam out. Make sure he knows which end is which. What's oh, you? They uh, told me to come here with us. You feeling better? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about the other night. Have you ever used a gun before? I wanted to at times. They said I needed a signature here. Yeah. Would you uh, wait just a minute, please? Mike. I'm worried about this permit. Why? It's that Johannes fellow, the one that carried on at the liquor dealer's meeting. Sure, he's upset. He just saw an old friend get killed. Why shouldn't he be allowed to protect himself? Uh, there's something about him. Not today, Adam, not today. What do you want me to do, analyze his handwriting or something? He's a liquor dealer. They're being hit. Give him the permit. I'll have it for you in a minute. Mike in? Yeah. What have you got? New bills from the first holdup. How many? Three. Three small ones. Where? 12th Street and 2nd Avenue, small bar. Come in my office. Yes, sir. Okay, Mr. Johannes. Just hoping you never have to use it. like an invasion from Mars. I said that to you first, back in Detroit. So you said it first. Why is it always so important who says anything first? If you don't know, I can't tell you. Stupid! You, uh, get the neighborhood leaflets with the sales and stuff? Yeah, isn't Billy supposed to bring them up? What are you standing there for? Get the man! You're watching it. Hey, go to sleep, huh? Chris, did you really find a gun in his drawer? Go to sleep. Did you see the way he got dressed up tonight? Chris? 
what would you say if you found somebody? Uh, a woman. I'd say the same thing I said before. Now go to sleep, huh? I don't know where to start here. Trieste bar. Let's start there, huh? Okay. Holy feet. Holy You got any more money, honey? What is that box top? Oh, a ring a deep. Oh, a ring a deep. Hey, what's going on? Maybe. You care for it. Here we go. Now just the door. Oh, 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 I got some beautiful women here and they're empty. Oh, oh, right, oh we, we, we got our own glasses here. Ladies, will you? We got our own glasses. Our glasses. Oh, you, you want to hear a joke? Huh? Yeah, Everyone, yeah. I own my own liquor store and our glasses are empty. How about that? <laughs> uh, Johannes's liquor store. And, I, and I'm having a grand opening tomorrow night. And you, if you can't get a drink here, you come and see me. Johannes's <laughs> liquor store. <laughs> anything like this before. What made you do it? You gonna tell me why you did it? Or am I gonna have to take that permit away from you? Uh, well, a couple of days ago was the anniversary of my wife's death. And I, uh, I just uh, got lonely. I wanted some company. I understand. Loneliness makes a man do funny things. Either he clams up, shouts at people, barks at them, or goes on looking. I don't get it. A man like you. I understand you have two sons. If 
shouldn't have to go to bars and taverns and places like that to find a woman. A man like you. Can't your friends introduce you to some eligible woman, some decent, hard-working woman? I know. I know what you mean. They always drag out some old battle axe. <laughs> Makes you wonder what they really think of you. Well, think you can make it home all right? Take a taxi. It's cold outside. Need some money? Okay. You guys, what do you know about people? Talk to you a minute. My name is Adam Flynn. I'm a detective. Do you want to see my identification? No, that's it's okay. We believe. It. My father? Well, it's nothing serious. Just a little talk. Well, where can we go? Uh, well, let's walk, okay? We both have to be home. Okay, fine. I met your father the other night. His friend was held up. Oh. I think it uh, shook him up a little more than he'd like to admit. Please. Let's stop. I want to get home, Jackie. Why? Well, if we ran into Pa and we were talking with the detective, he might get more upset. There's nothing to worry about. This is just a thing. Yeah, but you're worried about something. Otherwise, you wouldn't have looked for us, right? Why don't you just come out with it? Okay. I, uh, I think your father's under a lot of pressure. And I think the reasons for it, you probably know better than I do. Well, all the holdups that are going on don't help. I know you lost your mother about a year ago. And I just feel that, uh, maybe you should take into consideration these pressures on you. Do you know what he's talking about? Thank you, Mr. Flynn. All right, now, just a minute. The other evening at the liquor dealer's meeting, your father got up and addressed the group. Now, he may have been incoherent to them, but he wasn't to me. Between his friend's death and your mother's and whatever else, he's a man who's asking himself a lot of important questions. And I just feel that, uh, well, maybe you could help him carry those pressures a little better if you were... Uh, a bit nicer to him, a little more than usual. Is that all? Yeah, that's it. And Detective Flint, 65th Precinct. like this last year. Freedom. Here's what's going to happen. Now, if it works out, and I'm praying that it does, the three holdups I've figured out very carefully. You see, on account of the champagne, Harry distributed these leaflets announcing his sale. The other two stores had sales, too. You see, they're going to come on the night of the sale. Well, it's natural. More money in the cash register. So, I'm having a big grand opening. Step one. Now, step two, well, 
I guess you know what happened to me last night in those bars. Well, I had to get the word out about my sale. Well, Frida, I sell it, but uh, to tell you the truth, I, I can't for the life of me figure out why people drink that stuff. So, I've been practicing with this gun that I bought. And with any luck, I'll I'll get I'll get at least one of the hold-up men before they. Well, at least I'll 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 die fighting. And you know, Chris is very smart. He'll get the message. And if he gets it, I know Jack will. Now, now isn't it worth it if they if they start believing in something? I mean, if they, if, if, if they understand that life is important enough to die for. Now, please, don't be angry with me. Sawdust. Jack, come on, go home. I did my homework at school. You're running short of the free candy. Jack, I've got cartons of it out and back. Unwrapped ones. Now listen, I appreciate what you're doing, but I want you to go home. Why? Because. Well, to tell you the truth, I'm a little disappointed. I, I expected to take in more than I did, and I'm irritated. I want you to know that I love you very much. And I appreciate your, the, the clean floors that you swept three times and, and the clean shelves that you dusted a hundred times. But now I want to be alone. I'll wait up for you, Dad. My books and jacket are in the back. I'll go out the back way. Well, um, Jackie had the feeling first. He's, he's my kid brother, so I, I dismissed it. <laughs> but the more I thought about it, the more it made sense. My brother feels things out. I, I think them out, objectively. Uh-huh. Well, uh, looking at your father objectively. Well, I, I figure he's just old-fashioned enough to think that, well, by being a hero, he'd, he'd change something in us. Jackie and me, you know. Set us an example or something, I don't know. When does the store reopen? Tonight. Now. All right, come on. Before. You look familiar. 
So do your friends. in the door, it'll be a massacre. Let's call it a draw, Joannis. Why don't you leave us go? We'll let the kid go and we get outside, and then uh, we can start with a clean slate. Leave? We're going to try something, Frank. You in there, listen to me. The police are outside. No matter what you do, you can't get away. Come out one at a time, hands in the air, if you want to live. That does it, Mr. Johannes. Might as well uh, put the gun away. Let my son go. Let him go. Let the kid go. Shoulder. He got one of them, we got the other. Easy on his left shoulder. I'm proud of you, Johannes. Real proud of you. Boys, your daddy's gonna be okay. And you can be real proud of him. I don't understand anything. Why does he hate his father? Because he loves him. There are eight million stories.
been a Screen Gems film presentation, Herbert B. Leonard, executive producer.